Ah, Marcus Conti reporting today. Actually, a very special guest is on. He's on and he's waiting. I have the uh, the honor of talking to Nathan Stoltman of Lift of Vale. He's uh, he's he's here. He's with us. And uh, Nathan, if you've been following along, is having his uh, having a bout with uh, with uh, YouTube, and they're they're watering him down. They're trying to silence him. He didn't get kicked off, but he's he's in he's in YouTube jail for a week, right? So let's bring let's bring Nathan into the picture. Ah, my brother, my brother from a different mother. I'm wearing my shirt today, man. He, lift the veil, lift the veil. What's up? So what's up, Nathan? How you doing, man? Hey, Marcus. Thanks for having me on, man. First time I get to come on your show. Yeah, man. Next yeah. time, next time I come on, you'll have twice as many subscribers, probably. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you very much. I guess you, yeah, man. So, so this, uh, this is this is this is some bullshit right here, right? Where I saw your videos. You put up two videos. You were trying to explain to the uh, crowd what's going on. Uh, we'll we'll just you know get it get out of the darkness a little bit and just talk about it. Tell us what, what's going on. So so you sure. got. You know, you got you got this this business of YouTube censoring your videos from a year ago, right? Telling three, you three years ago, three years ago, three years ago, you make a video and then and then correct me if I'm wrong, you made it private where no one could see it for for at least a year. It's been set to <laughs> private for at least a year, and then they and they decide to strike that for a community violation. Right. Um, so far it's eight videos since, um, Friday, since Friday, eight videos, um, at least four of them. Now I think at least five of them have been sent to private for at least a year. Um, and the, and then, uh, many of them are from 2016, you know, some of the very first videos I ever made. And like I said, there's no way to see them. And in fact, there's no way for me to even, uh, Doshi just showed up, by the way. Yeah, see ya. <laughs> hey, Doshi. Say hi to everybody. Hello, uh, Doshi. <laughs> so, uh, it's, uh, you know, it's obviously a targeted, you know, um, it, it's not a conspiracy theory to say that it's a targeted thing because all of a sudden out of nowhere, when I haven't gotten a strike for a long time, uh, they give me, they take down eight videos, all for what they call bullying and harassment. And, you know, I don't do that on my channel. Um, people watch my channel know I don't do that. So, uh, and then some of the videos, for example, one of the videos is called um, CIA's Syria War Propaganda. And mm -hmm. it's about, you know, the propaganda coming out of Aleppo. And this was in 2016, right? Nice. Before everybody was talking about it. And um, why would they take down that video? You know, what's bullying and harassment about that, I wonder. So it's really, um, it's really seems very nefarious. And, you know, with all this talk right now, like Tim Pool going on Joe, Joe Rogan and Joe Rogan talking to these Twitter guys about why they're banning people and why people are getting strikes and stuff. You know, I want to know how do you get how do you get a strike for videos that are set to private for bullying and harassment, and where why does it come out of nowhere? And I, I mean, I can tell you why they did it, but yeah. uh, but 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 somebody should be asking them. You know, I wish there was a way to ask them because they just gaslight you if you appeal it. All the my appeals have already been rejected, and then when you say, oh, this, you know. Like when they demonetize my channel all in one day, they just gaslight you and say, "Oh no, that's because of the videos, the individual videos." And <laughs> yeah, I, so I can go I into all it's, the different things. You know, it's been for my channel. It's not the first. You know, I've had my channel deleted twice. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I've been going through this for a long, long time, but I've run such a clean show that I, you know. I don't, I'm not doing anything wrong. I'm not breaking the rules. Right, right. You, you, I know it's it's a, it's a scary notion. I mean, it's like you 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 have no control over it. I know the um, the phenomena of trying to appeal. It happened to me. I got the uh, a copyright strike, a bullshit copyright strike, and a video was taken down, and uh, and you get that you know that half smiley face for three months or whatever. And uh, you you appeal it even I mean I I've I've fought legal battles and I I formulated a legal argument and they didn't even answer they they answer with the with the 
formulated, you know, oh, uh, you know, whatever. I don't even remember what it was, but it was just a, you, I couldn't believe how cold of a response that uh, you're not even talking to a real person. It's their way or the highway. And, uh, it, you know, it makes you wonder about the First Amendment, uh, that, you know, this this business of corporations deciding what is free speech and what isn't free speech. And, of course, we all know the answer, right? The answer is, the answer is that that it's uh, it, it, it's 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 censorship because we're not towing a party line, we're 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 flying in the face of, you know, a party line, right? Is that fair to is that a fair assessment? You know. Well, yeah. I mean, I can tell you what I talk about on my channel. You know, um, I talk about whatever is in the news that they say they don't want us to talk about, pretty right. much. Right. And, um, you know, most recently on my channel, I haven't been like an anti-vaxxer channel or anything like that. I hardly talk about vaccines. But then I see it in the news that you're not allowed to talk about the dangers of vaccines anymore. So, you know, I wanted to report on that and say, hey, this is what they're telling you in the news. This is, you know, what has come out in the past about the dangers of vaccines. And, and the videos are buried. They don't get many views, but I felt it was important to cover and then the, the latest thing was I covered this old conspiracy, so-called conspiracy theory that this guy wrote an op-ed about, basically, saying that conspiracy theories need to be shut down from YouTube. So, you know, and this was in particular about a shooting, a shooting that happened on live TV that back when it happened, all these people pointed out these weird anomalies and stuff. And not, I'm not going to get into it on your channel, but I covered that guy's article and then i covered like the videos to the contemporaneous videos from the time of the shooting and stuff and just talk and just showed what people were saying in the comments like a lot of people are saying oh this is totally fake and all this stuff on the mainstream videos most of the comments under you know the interviews with this dad and this kid the comments underneath said, oh, this is totally fake, blah, blah, blah. So it wasn't that people were making hoax videos about this. You can't find anything saying this is a hoax anymore. Under the main videos, everybody's saying it's fake, you know? Right. And I just point out, it's not, it's not conspiracy theory videos that are making people think this stuff. You know, they, they want people to think that we're brainwashing people and doing it for clicks or money or to sell t-shirts or whatever it is. Um, but that's not the case. I mean, people genuinely out there believe uh, it, that there is something different going on and they want to hear from people who also believe the same thing. And uh, instead they paint it like we're the ones perpet you know, making these things spread. We're the ones responsible for people questioning their government or not having faith in institutions or not getting their kids vaccinated. You know, they want to think that it's our fault uh, and that if they're able to silence us, then, you know, those problems will go away, right? The people will stop thinking that. Yeah, I mean, just from my my observation, you're one of the most congenial uh, kind of guys. You, I've never seen you have an argument. I've never seen you slam anybody and hang up on them or, you know, I, I mean, your 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 style is 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 steady as she, you know, steady as we go. And to get a community strike, a strike to say that you're bullying or some kind of harassing is, is borders on ridiculous. Wouldn't, obviously wouldn't hold up in any court, but none of this ever sees a court, which is the point. You know, we're now, we're now in a sphere where corporations have all the power, all the say. And, uh, you know, and look, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of coming up and I'm new at this and, uh, and, you know, it's it's just it's just a scary idea. You know, you think like there's there there is there is certain freedoms, but in inside as well as those they they put on brakes on your they put brakes like code into your videos, so it kind of like slows down the uh, the viewership. But uh, you know, that's there's no doubt in my mind. You know that uh, that what you're doing what what you're doing is is giving people. Uh, the opportunity you're you're voicing an opinion, and you're giving other people the uh, the 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 ability to voice an opinion that counters your opinion. And that how could that how could that be interpreted as uh, as you know as uh, bullying? 
Here, here's here's the thing. I just and and we'll go on. Um, I think uh, that the opportunity, and I think we we had talked about this. The opportunity was Alex Jones, right? Now, Alex Jones got he got not just banned for a week, but bullied off all three sites: Facebook, Twitter, and whatever else, right? And and uh, and YouTube, right? Right? A a a a, a very very you know planned hit, right? And some of us said, well, eh, you know, there's more, more market share to go around. Bye, Alex. See ya. You know, and that, that's, you can fall into that, that uh, mindset of, well, he's gone, so what? But guess what? They're coming after us next. They're cu- you know, and, and evidence is in that they're, they're chopping, you, chopping you down for no reason. I guess th- my question is, what do you, did Alex Jones drop the ball? Or guys like Alex Jones who failed to fight back or... You know, is that is that is that valid? I think so. Yeah. I I mean, if that that's what I think. Yes. As that's and that's why. I mean, I you know, I a lot of people argue because because Alex Jones has woken a lot of people up, um, or at least got them questioning things. But I do believe he is controlled oppositions, and mm. I I just and part of that is why isn't he fighting YouTube? I I, I have to think you're. You have this site, this platform, and it becomes your way of income and or, you know, what you do to support yourself, even though, you know, I'm on my videos. None of them are monetized. They don't allow it, um, which started, you know, at a specific point where I can point out, you know, why they did it. Um, but, uh, if that's the way you, you know, you start to live and then you don't break the rules. Right, which I don't really know that Alex Jones did, um, and then they kick you off. Even so, I mean that's the real thing. Is 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 you know I know I, I didn't break any rules, and some of this actually is that not to get off the Alex Jones topic, but I'll come back to it. Is some of this honestly is that these videos I put out in 2016 weren't against the rules at the time. Since then, they've come out and basically said those kinds of videos are not okay. So what did I do? I sent them to private because of that, right? The rules change and evolve over time. So we make a video one day and Alex Jones might have done this too because a lot of the, the some of the stuff they got him for was stuff he said a long time ago. You know, they start digging through old stuff. And that's what happened on Twitter too is they hadn't had any complaints about Alex Jones. And all of a sudden they had a bunch of complaints on old tweets he did. And they looked through everything and they found excuses to get him off. But he didn't break any rules there either. You know, the interview with Tim Pool, Joe Rogan and the the two, and um, the Twitter exec kind of proved that. But I would think Alex Jones, because he's been denied basically his right to make money and could probably in court show that he didn't break the rules, you know, the terms of service. Why wouldn't he fight it? You know, he also doesn't fight Sandy Hook. And uh, I think he should because the one case so far, uh, Sandy, um, you know, you can't even say this stuff, but I'm kind of tired of it. The one case that's ever been fought in court um, brought by a Sandy Hook parent, the Sandy Hook parent lost that case. And I think that's relevant. And when I had on that guest who'd been sued, that was the day my channel was demonetized completely and it never came back. So, you know, what I think they're doing to me is actually like there, it's like a punishment, right? They're like, don't ever do this again. You know, um, that's what they did when I had Wolfgang Halbig on. That's what I did after this last video now. And they're still doing, um, but Alex Jones. Yeah. I mean, uh, I think there is a case. I think there is a case for people to get shut down. I just don't know how to do it because when you talk to them, you can threaten them with a lawsuit or whatever, and you get these canned responses or just in the, and like I said, it's just gaslighting. It's like, they'll just tell you something that's definitely not true. And you can't really, you can't even really have a conversation with them. Uh, and then there's no way to contact him and there's no way. So uh, it would require somebody with the wherewithal to, to sue or, you know, I've considered hiring an attorney to write a letter. Um, but so far I haven't needed it. You know, my channel is still hung on, you know. Yeah. And I, I think after, even if you were able to allege a, a case, 
you would get into a court that is corporately sponsored in some way and it wouldn't you wouldn't get your you know you wouldn't get your voice heard anyway they would they would rule in in i mean i've been down that road where you fly to, you know, I fought, you know, the law and the law won. You know, what, what you do is you go up against these, these corporate, uh, corporations and the courts tend to side. I think, uh, I mean, here's what I think, right? To, as a, as a sideline guy, a guy who was watching from the sideline, I, f- I found that in 2016, right, when Bernie Sanders was running against Hillary Clinton, what happened was if you were paying attention on Facebook, Facebook, the the swell of 30, 40 million people, the Bernie Sanders people, that swelled took over, totally took over Facebook, took over uh, YouTube, took over Twitter. Right? It was a it was a mass wave, and and I know I know a lot of Trump people they don't they don't see it they don't want to see it they 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 love their idol Donald Trump, but the fact is that. The the thing the th- the thing about social media, it started in 2016, leading up to that Hillary Clinton Bernie Sanders run. And when Bernie Sanders took off and was was the clear favorite in beating her in state after state after state, and then they started to cheat, documented cheating, shutting down the you know the exit polls, all that stuff started to happen. They lost control of the narrative, and Bernie they 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 had to make up a narrative and blame Russia, right? That's, I mean, this is my, my view of it, right? And, and now it's like, okay, we're not going to let that happen again. And, and guys like you talking about stuff that, that matters and that people want to hear about goes against the, the sales pitch, right? No, no, no. You pick, don't you understand? You pick between shit sandwich Joe Biden or you get four more years of Trump and that's, that's the choice. And what are you talking about? I don't, I don't know, you know, this other stuff about about uh, who shot who, right? They, they don't, you know, so I think it, it is that simple. And, and I, I, I mean, I don't take it personal. I, I hope you don't take it personal. Like it's a personal attack at you. But I think it's, it is politics. It is presidential political politics. I think that the Democrats are prepared to lose to, they'll, they'll, they, they'd rather lose, and, uh, lose to Trump than win with Sanders. I think that that's, the reality right now. So I, I think that that's, it's tied in there. And we're seeing this, this crackdown, this uh, austerity on conflicting voices, right and left. Uh, and, uh, and that's just the reality. And that's a, that's a, that's a scary place to be. It, it's, it's not the First Amendment, you know, so. Yeah, I, know there's I no mean, it's, in they're there. basically stifling dissent. And right. a, a lot of ways, it's not that far from China, you know, they say, oh, you know, in China, they censored the Internet. Well, our Internet is censored, too. Now, I mean, you know, we're not allowed to see certain viewpoints. We're not allowed to see them on Twitter. We're not allowed to see them on Facebook. We're not allowed to have a debate about whether the earth is flat anymore. <laughs> you know, <laughs> we can't, which is crazy that people aren't allowed to think that and, and to think that to win a debate between the flat earth and the globe earth or between vaccines are safe and vaccines might be dangerous that you would literally have to get rid of one side of the debate. So in order for the other side to win, you literally have to eliminate the other side of the debate. Mm -hmm. And that means we're not having debates in this country, you know, and, and, and speaking of politics and, and we can't, since you're, you know, a lefty and stuff or a socialist and, I'm a little different, but I'm really always following politics. I mean, you know, the one politician I've talked about so far is Tulsi Gabbard. And, you know, that's not okay either. So, um, and I'm always anti-war, just like you are, just like a lot of us are. And that's not, that's not going to be acceptable, you know. Right. No doubt. No, I watched, uh, I got the uh, Tulsi Gabbard clip running right now. And it's, um... I mean, yeah, it looks like, I mean, this is classic example. You talk about Tulsi. She's, she's young. She's smart. She's a war veteran. She's all those things, right? And, 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 but why do they go on CNN? They go right into the snake pit, right? And, and what happens? They, the first three, I only watched the first part of it because you told me to watch it. <laughs> but the, the first three questions were, did, did Assad gas his own people? It's all the, yep. it's all the trigger points. Are you in it? Is anything anti-Israel, anti-Semitic? Why can't you say anti-Semitic? 
So what they're doing is they're prep, they're priming her for the hit pieces, right? They, that's the only people they've had on so far, Sanders and, and Tulsi Gabbard, the only two people that have the potential to win, right? In yeah. my view, anyway. They're, they're, that's it, right? Because anybody else is, is uh, you get Trump again. And, uh, but, but nonetheless, they don't learn their lesson. They're not, they think that, um, I, I don't know, I'm watching, the little bit I'm watching, I don't see her as r- really beating, you know, what's her name, the, the one in the red dress, uh, I don't see her really out, you know, beating CNN at their own game, right? So it's like, but it, you know, and it comes down to what, what's happening with you. It's like you, you, you either you either play ball and go on and get and and deal with their hit pieces just to get the exposure, or you stay in the dark and nobody knows who you are. So you so you roll those dice and you you know it's not truthful and you know it's not honest, but like in your case. It's it's like they're trying to prevent you from making a living. They're trying to. Th- there's no competition. Like the f- the further you go up, the more they they try to hammer you down. And that's, I I think Elizabeth Warren, if you know, not as a candidate for president, but as a human being, is now pointing that out. She's the only candidate saying break up Facebook, Google, and and Twitter, right? And you got Bernie Sanders saying break up the banks, right? So that's that's a. Trump is like, you know, throwing gas on all the fire, you know. So, I mean, the the left, I look, again, I'm not a fucking socialist, man. I'm not a fucking socialist, right? Oh, okay. all right, all right. Socialism, social yeah. programs like the police and the fire department and parks and and you know and and uh, you know, museums. That's not that's not socialism. It's it's That's all right. That's all right. But uh, uh but but anyway, that that's I don't mean to I don't mean to call you a socialist. They got into that uh, with Tulsi too last night. Yeah, I saw it. I saw like, it. Oh, you. I I saw, saw her, the whole I thing. saw that question. Yeah, I saw that question, and 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 she she stumbled on it. Just look into the camera and say socialism. The scare that you're trying to the red scare of Russia and the U.S. calling the the Russian socialists and the socialists calling the the Americans calling the Russian socialists. Russians calling the American socialists from 1940s is not a vet, It's not alive. It has no meaning. Noam Chomsky right. spells it out. That that's not that's the the weaponized term that Trump is gonna he's gonna say it twenty five times into Bernie Sanders' face, and Sanders doesn't have the backbone to say shut up. It's not socialism, you idiot. You just you allocated you know seven hundred fifty billion dollars to a military. That's that's social. That's a social program, right? You know, and but. Uh, but that that business of socialism versus capitalism, there is no capitalism. What we have is unfettered oligarchy, monopoly, and I think that that's that's what the the extreme left, I guess, for lack of a better term, Tulsi Gabbard, Bernie Sanders, and a little bit uh, sprinkle in a little bit Elizabeth Warren represent examining that, and and maybe some of the problems that you're having and some of the problems that I'm having, and the, you know the rest of the uh, community on YouTube is having, uh, could, could get a little less, you know? Yeah. Well, you know, the great thing about having a big democratic primary or uh, the great thing about a primary, if it goes well, is you get a lot of people throw out ideas to see if they catch on, you know? Right. And so, uh, Tulsi Gabbard isn't talking about breaking up the monopolies, but Elizabeth Warren is, I don't love Elizabeth Warren, but that idea if it proves to be popular, you know, could be picked up by other candidates too. And, and, you know, the fact that people are talking about, um, Medicare for all, obviously, which is a big deal this time and, and all these different solutions, at least it gives people a chance to consider them. And then yeah. when you come out with something crazy, like the green new deal, people get to see, um, what, what that kind of idea looks like and at least, uh, judge it for themselves. But that's the whole, but that's the whole thing. You have to be able to get these ideas out there. I mean, you know, I think we need to enforce antitrust laws. I've been saying it forever. And, and I think that would make a huge difference. Uh, mm-hmm. And it's, uh, it's a clear case. That's the other thing about these. I think there's a definite case that people can make. You know, people could be, file a class action lawsuit even at this point against, against these platforms, you know, mm-hmm. and just, just say it's, um, and, and just say it's d- d- discrimination, basically. Um, well, no, I'm sorry to say that's unfair business practices, basically that they're unfairly 
market because there are no competitors, you know, and, and that's the whole thing about um, about where I'm at, where you're at. If YouTube doesn't allow us to be on the platform, there is no alternative. There is no viable right. alternative. So that, by definition, I think is a monopoly. And they, br you know, as far as the government getting involved uh, in regulation, um, one of the best things they do, and they just don't enforce it. One of the best things they do is this antitrust thing. And they broke up the phone companies and it was good for everybody. You know, mm -hmm. um, that's one thing that that worked out. You know, it, it brought competition. It brought phone prices. And I remember, you know, I kind of remember the results of that, uh, where they broke up the monopolies and the phone companies and prices went way, you know, it, calls are basically free, um, you know, in the country. So, um, so I think that that's. You know, I think that's definitely one idea, and I feel like it's something that could be fought uh, with a very reasonable legal argument. I feel like the government just has no interest at all in enforcing antitrust laws because they're symbiotic with these corporations. You know, we have a government that is not a government. It's a, it's a public-private partnership, you know, where the government is partnering with these giant companies and their and their monopolies benefit the government because they have more control, you know. And then, then they work with Amazon, they work with Google, they work with Facebook, they work with Twitter, and uh, and they have no interest in doing that. Yeah. No doubt, no doubt. So let me let me so, yeah let, let me ask you a question. You so I, I mean again you're you're a you're a firebrand. Do you get do do you have fans? Do you have fans come up to you in the street and say? Uh, hey, hey, it's Nathan. It's Nathan Stallman, man. Let me get his fucking get a <laughs> selfie with him. Does that happen? No, no. Well, I don't live in a city for one thing. I live uh, on the central coast here in California. So now I've right. one person emailed me and asked if I lived in the area, and I didn't. You know, I'm I'm I, I tr because of the stuff I talk about. I try to be real careful in general about talking about things I do regularly and stuff, but yeah, sure. um, probably nothing to worry about, but yeah, uh, no, rarely. I mean, when I, like when I went to a pizza gate rally once, uh, way back when people were talking about that in 2017, um, people there, uh, recognized me because they were in the YouTube kind of community. So I'll see, I'm going to go see Jimmy door. So oh. I'll see if anybody, you know, that's a place where if anybody's ever going to recognize me, uh, people who watch stuff on YouTube might. But no, you know, there's, uh, I still feel relatively anonymous. I don't, you know, it, it, and that's the thing, you know, I don't have a huge impact and, and, um, but, but on the positive side, there, you know, on the, on the positive side, there is an impact, you know, to all the stuff that we mm -hmm. do. And, um, and on the positive side, you know, the genie is out of the bottle. I mean, people are woken up. There is no way to stop it completely. You know, there are still going to be people out there. Um, and the more they, they, they try to clamp down, the more people are going to react. And people are uh, ready for other platforms, too, right now. They're really ready to find something new. So, um, the, you know, there's more opportunities than ever as far as creating something. So I, I'm actually looking into that too. You know? Yeah. No, it's, I mean, you it's know, actually, it's so. actually, it's funny that you have to talk about other options while we're on their option, right? Like right, right now right. we're, we're discussing, we're discussing the, the, the enemy, but we're actually in the same sense, having to be dependent on the enemy and such, but I don't know. I see you. You're not going anywhere. That's in my view. That uh, you've broken no rules. You've you're 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 over the target, so to speak, and you're you're pushing buttons and you're 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 challenging. I mean, I, I remember you and I. We talked about what we talked about Jenny Moore. We did. We talked yeah. about Seth Rich. The the uh, Caesar Sayak. What else? The borderline borderline. You know, it's like I try to I try to not fly too too much into that, but um, I don't see you as as going anywhere. I, I just again to the to the people that are watching, I think a lot of people um, look at something like this and say, "Oh, this guy's this, this is a fucking actor. This is easy. Look, why, why don't you go get a job?" You know how many people have told me that? Why don't you go get a fucking job? Get a real job. Right? And I, I say to, I, I say to you is like. 
tell tell me right now that this is not an easy gig that you get you got you got a hundred people in the course of a day telling you what what time it is what to do you should do this and you should do that if you read your own comments you get you know all all that stuff what's your i mean what's your what's your i guess what's your uh what is your uh, secret to success because you are successful you are you do have impact you have eighty thousand people that know who you are and tune in and that's no joke man that's why you're getting shot at because because you are a threat you do when you have sway like that you're saying something that people want to hear about and tune in right and so i guess what is your you know what are you are you really grounded in the truth or are you maybe an opportunist are you just doing this for sell t-shirts oh man well i can say for people who say um, for people who say that it's a uh, very hard work and it, and it can be, and it's incredibly stressful, you know, if you don't know how to deal with it, um, especially once you're getting to a point where, you know, you have to try to rely on it to get by. And for people who say I should get a job, I can't get a job. You know, if you search my name on Google, you know, it's calling me a shill or a whatever you get articles about. I'm a flat earther. and I mean, just crazy stuff. So no one could ever hire me. If they did, people would call my work, just like we've seen in a lot of cases, just like you've seen like Dave Swigert do and some of these other trolls, you know, they'll, they'll call your work, try to get you fired. I mean, there is no, uh, that's the thing is once you tr start telling the truth, you know, people go crazy. And I've had people try to destroy my life. I've had, I've been infiltrated by um, you know, intelligence before, um, and it's, uh, and it all, I almost lost my mind at one point. And actually just because I was able to get through that, um, that's why I was able to get through now is I've just, you know, you have to let all the criticism and all the people telling you what to do. You just have to learn how to deal with that and kind of ignore it. And all the people, you know, you've seen all the people that make videos about me and are, and just hate me. Um, but that's, I've learned what happens when you tell the truth. I'm, I'm a hundred percent committed to doing what I think is right. You know, um, what I, you know, I, I have faith in God and I want to do, um, the right thing. I, I believe that's what we're supposed to do. And so I go forward that way. Um, I, I go forward that way. And then as far as trying to make a living out of it, we started a t-shirt company. I don't think anybody can say is uh, a bad thing. Um, and by the way, I'm going to, we're, I want you to advertise for us. Okay. We're going to do a special. Okay, Marcus. Yeah. Go I don't ahead. know if you know this. So we're going to do a special for anybody who wants to support the show. Cause I can't advertise anymore. Uh, I'm wearing our yellow vest revolution tea. I know you talk about that a lot. If you so go to truth, hold on, hold on a second. truth I, uh, clothing, truth clothing dot IO, right. And you put in at checkout, put in Marcus as your code. Okay, and I'm at your site so people, split, people could see it. People could see it. And I will not only share profits uh, with Marcus, but I'll throw in one of these stickers. I have a bunch of these that Marcus sent me. I'll, I'll throw in one of these stickers with every order. And then if you get some and you put in his code, Marcus will get some money for it, and then he might want to advertise for us more. So that's one thing we want to do is like help out other channels. You know, we support free speech. That's one of the things is we want to support free speech and – and help out channels like yours and, mm -hmm. and other people who tell the truth kind of fearlessly, um, even though, you know, they know they're going to have to, you know, take some punishment for it. So, and I found you, the whole reason I found your channel when you had, I don't know if it was 300 subscribers yeah. or, yeah. Um, and had you on my show was because you were talking about how Seth, you didn't think Seth Rich was dead. Mm -hmm. And that's something I had been saying since 2016 and when I saw you saying, I thought, oh, this guy's, you know, this guy's willing to go against the grain. He's willing to look at the facts, even though it sounds crazy. You know, yeah. you're able to look at stuff that other people, you know, a lot of people get cognitive dissonance when they start looking into that stuff. And um, and now you see they've had to retract the Seth Rich conspiracy theory. Did you hear about that? No, I didn't. What, what happened? What happened? Um, Jerome Corsi and somebody else had to retract what they said about the Seth Rich, you know, so-called conspiracy theory. They actually had to take it back. Wow. I, I, I should look for, I should have sent you that article. Yeah. That's wow. one of the things going on in conspiracy theory land. 
So, so anyway, so you, truth so you indict, I, uh, use Marcus and yeah. you can get one of these t-shirts, other ones, a hoodie you have on a shirt of ours right now. So, and that'd be cool. If, and you could always do that. Anybody who wants to buy with his code, it'll always support Marcus's channel. So, yeah, man. Sounds good, Nathan. What else, man? What else is going on, man? So, uh, so how's sunny California? Is that the... Uh... It's been the coldest winter. You know, I don't know how you feel about global warming, but it's been, you know, in, in Los Angeles, which I'm not too far from. In LA, it didn't get up to 70 in February for the first time in 128 years. And here it's been cold and rainy. And th this is one reason people call me a shill. My dad worked for the EPA you know, 20 years ago. Right. And he was, you know, global warming. That was the thing, global warming. And his, uh, he ran the um, atmosphere, the program for atmospheric programs. So he was into reducing CO2 output and all this stuff. And I told him, I was like, Dad, you know, I think that data might not be right. I, I really don't know if it's been getting hotter. And, and, you know, Jerry Brown said it was going to be a drought in California, right, forever. And he went to the mountains, he showed the snowpack and how it wasn't there. And, how California was going to be. And now, you know, it's been raining two years in a row. It's raining. It's been raining all winter in California and it's freezing cold. Um, so it hasn't been great, Marcus, but mm -hmm. it will get. I live in the plate, one of the places with the best weather in the world. It's normally about 70 degrees every day. So, wow. Yeah, it's been cold as hell and cold, very, very cold in New York. But it's about to break. I mean, just on, on climate change, I think you'd, you'd have to. You have to agree. I mean, what is so what is so ridiculous about the idea of moving towards solar panels, going to a place like Arizona that has nothing but desert, New Mexico, wherever there's wherever there's abundant sun from from sunrise to sunset, very few clouds. You line the desert with 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 solar panels that are cheap. They're made out of sand, right? And you you feed that back into the grid. You have windmills. I know people, they, they say that the windmills uh, mess with the birds. Well, I mean, something with tides. You can have tide power and all these, all these alternative energies. Now, it, makes, it, just, it, just, uh, it seems illogical when people say, oh, that, they, they call that socialism. That's socialism, too. Oh, right. no, 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 solar panels are socialism. I don't want that. I'd rather burn right. gas. Right. Right? <laughs> I'd rather drill. I'd rather have Exxon drill a pipe under my drinking water and with, the, with the possibility of it exploding and polluting my drinking water than harness the power of the sun. It, it almost, it's almost ridiculous, right? I mean, Well, yeah. well I, I'm with you. Like, even though I don't agree that necessarily – I don't think the science is there necessarily for human-caused climate change. Uh, even though that's the case, I still think it's a great idea to go to 100% alternative energy um, mm -hmm. because look at all the wars we're fighting over oil. I mean, look at look at what this does to us using mm -hmm. hydrocarbons to we're you know ruining the water in the United States. We're uh, going to we want to overthrow Venezuela now. Mm -hmm. We're already in Syria because of oil, and we have things like I I, I think nuclear power. Nuclear sure. power safe. Agree. I mean, yeah, I know, agree. I mean, France runs on seventy percent nuclear power. You know, nobody ever talks about it, and everybody's like, "Oh no, Fukushima and Chernobyl." And meanwhile, Chernobyl's fine now. There was supposed to be no life for seventy thousand years or something in Chernobyl. There's like wildlife everywhere, trees everywhere. You know, so this nuclear power hoax is also another thing that I, I've talked about before. Yeah. But, um, but you know, that's another alternative. So even though that's why there's a lot of places where, I don't know, people can agree on things. It's supposedly like a left-wing thing, this global warming. But alternative energies is a great idea, so we can get together on that. I mean, you know, even like that's one place where you can go with climate change. People like to say, yeah, let's get on nuclear power. Let's get on renewable power. Then we don't have to rely, you know, then we don't have to be friends with Saudi Arabia, you know. Yeah. Think of all the benefits to that, yeah. you know, geopolitically. Yeah. No, I mean, in, in terms of uh, – and then uh, I'll give you the, the last word. We're already at 45 minutes, 40 minutes or something, so <laughs> so people don't fall asleep on us. But but I think the uh, – with climate change, I think there is I, – I mean, we probably disagree on it. But I think there is an argument that it is that it is human activity causing it. If you look at population alone from – 
the 1970s when we weren't having these problems, population, human population was 3 billion. Now we're at 7 billion. I mean, when you look at the, the, the staggering population ex- explosion of humans and, you know, the, 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 again, everybody burning fossil fuel, everybody uh, unfortunately eating animals and, and, and uh, you know, cow farts and all that stuff, that's very real. I mean, you know how many cows it takes to feed seven trillion people, uh, seven billion right. people. It is real that they put out a lot of methane, and then it and it is real that they've done experiments where they say theoretically these are what they call greenhouse yeah. gases. And it's also real the temperatures went up in the last part of last century. I'm just not sure that since then uh, the numbers they've been giving us are necessarily accurate. So I'm not sure, given that we're still increasing you know, uh, our population is still increasing our CO2 output. We haven't seen the catastrophic uh, pr- predictions come true about where we should be based on all that extra activity. So, you know, but again, it doesn't, it, it doesn't, it doesn't really matter. Right. Either way, I agree we should cut down CO2 just because I be- believe there's not much reason for us to be burning hydrocarbons to create energy. I think there are other alternatives to it. And, um, you know, one technology that will change the world is a better battery technology because the trouble with solar panels now is you can only use the energy when the sun's out and there's no good way to store it. Um, If we can build a better battery with like graphene or something, I mean, this is off topic, but that'll change the world. Mm -hmm. Um, So, you know, there is the chance people should think as far as one thing people don't consider when they think about the future and they think about how bleak it is, is uh, or appears to be, is the potential still for world-changing technologies. I mean, we could have free energy. I mean, we could have free yeah. energy. We could do that if if people were committed to it. Um, and it, there's you know arguments that that technology is being suppressed. But um, you know, think about the future if that happened. Think about how much things would change if we weren't having wars over oil and everything. Yeah, no doubt. So, so what's uh, just in in finality? What do you are you going to uh, are you going to uh, censor yourself and only talk about from now on and be a good little boy and and talk about politically correct subjects? Talk about the how wonderful Trump is and or how wonderful Bernie Sanders is, and fall in line, young man. Is that is that your strategy, or are you gonna you're gonna keep following the muse, following the truth? Well, um, let me tell people where to find me. You can find me at youtube.com slash lift the veil. That's my main channel. Subscribe there because I'm hoping that'll still remain. But you can find my backup channels from there, too. If you type in lift the veil to T.O.O., I think all three of my channels come up. So go ahead and find me there if you guys don't know me yet. Um, And then what am I going to talk about? Well, I would be hesitant to talk about one of these, you know, allegedly fake shootings again, although, you know, there was nothing wrong with pointing out the strange discrepancies of the borderline shooting. And I didn't get any strikes for that. And, um, and there was actually absolutely nothing wrong with what I did the other day either. Um, no, I'm not going to stop. Uh, mainly, uh, if that continues to create a problem for me, um, then I, I, j- we just have to figure out what to do from there, you know, alternative platforms. Um, and then, you know, as far as trying to keep the things going for, for me and my wife and stuff, uh, maybe try to do partnerships and stuff with our store. Um, but right now I think, you know, we have to, I have to start th- seriously thinking about alternatives. So, you know, whether that's a website or, and that would be an alternative where everybody who's telling the truth would be, you know, where do you, you be able to find stuff where people are telling the truth, the stuff that's not going to be recommended to you in YouTube anymore, you know, the stuff with differing opinions. Um, so, you know, like I said, I try to keep a positive outlook and now I'm not going to stop. I'm not, you know, no, I'm not going to change my content. You know, uh, not- fantastic, man. So, so why don't you, uh, let's, uh, let, I'll let you take us out. Um, so this will, I'll probably, you know what I'm going to try to do? I'm going to try to post this. If So if people are watching it, I'll try to post it as a premiere. So oh, yeah, that, that'd be cool. Right? Set it up as a premiere so that uh, we can we can be in the chat and actually watch it. I don't know if it's going to work because I'm, I'm like clumsy with, with this uh, at this point. But uh, 
So, uh, so, so, go ahead and take us out with the uh, with with uh, Doshi and your uh, tell us what it is. Well, for people who don't know Doshi, that's um, that's the producer for the show. He's actually a candidate for 2020. Although, you know, I'm not into politics and I don't want to get into it too much. My show, I do like Tulsi, maybe as his running mate. Um, but well, actually, we're also giving away these with orders this week while I'm off the air. This is his uh, Doshi 2020 campaign pin. Um, he believes in ending the Fed, um, reform, you know, obviously prison reform, uh, decriminalizing all drugs, um, it, while Medicare for all, basically, even though we have to fix the broken health care system. He has a number of good plans, so make sure everybody keeps him in mind for the 2020 campaign. And, um, you know, any, any extra proceeds we have, we'll use for his campaigning, you know, his campaign trail and stuff. So, um, if you want me to sign me out, the well, for me, Doshi and Marcus Conte reporter, Marcus Conte, that is what it is. <laughs>